today we're going to talk about cause and effect. Um, and you are going to have a job to do. You have to decide what happens, but then you have to look a little bit deeper and decide why the things happened. So let's talk just for a minute about cause and effect relationships. Um, an effect is what happens in a story. The cause is why something happens. So here the effect is we have an umbrella. The cause of us having an umbrella is that it rained. So because it rained, we had to get an umbrella. When one event causes another to happen, this is when we have the cause and effect relationship. So again, the cause is why it happens, and the effect is what actually happens. So if the cause is what makes something happen, to figure out what the cause is, you need to ask yourself, well, what happened first? That doesn't always mean it's the first thing in the sentence, but it is the thing that happens in time first. An effect is what happens because of something else, because of that cause. That's why we say because. To find the effect, you need to ask yourself, okay, what happened second? The effect comes after the cause. So I studied for the test and I got an A. Well, I had to study before I took the test. After the test, I found out I got an A. So because I studied for the test, I got an A+. Plus. That's the effect. Mike missed the bus this morning and is going to be late for school. Again, we can use the word because to figure out what the cause is. Because Mike missed the bus this morning, he's going to be late for school. So the effect of missing the bus is that he is late for school. I know that you know this book. I love this book. Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. We're going to read through this book quickly. It's a lovely picture book. There's a movie that's great. We're not watching the movie. Watch that on your own. It's worth it. It's good. But I want you to pay attention to cause and effect relationships in this book. Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day by Judith Viorst. I went to sleep with gum in my mouth, and now there's gum in my hair. And when I got out of bed this morning, I tripped on the skateboard, and by mistake, I dropped my sweater in the sink while the water was running, and I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At breakfast, Anthony found a Corvette Stingray car kit in his breakfast cereal box. Nick found a junior undercover agent code ring in his breakfast cereal box. But in my breakfast cereal box, all I found was breakfast cereal. I think I'll move to Australia. In the carpool, Mrs. Gibson let Becky have a seat by the window. Audrey and Elliot got seats by the window, too. I said I was being scrunched. I said I was being smushed. I said, if I don't get a seat by the window, I'm going to be car sick. No one even answered. I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. At school, Mrs. Dickens liked Paul's picture of the sailboat better than my picture of the invisible castle. At singing time, she said I sang too loud. At counting time, she said I left out 16. Who needs 16? I could tell it was going to be a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. I could tell because Paul said I wasn't his best friend anymore. He said that Philip Parker was his best friend, and that Albert Moyo was his next best friend, and that I was only his third best friend. I hope you sit on a tack, I said to Paul. I hope the next time you get a double-decker strawberry ice cream cone, the ice cream cone ice cream part falls off the cone part and lands in Australia. There were two cupcakes in Philip Parker's lunch bag, and Albert got a Hershey bar with almonds, and Paul's mother gave him a piece of jelly roll that had little coconut sprinkles on the top. Guess whose mother forgot to put in dessert? It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. That's what it was, because after school, my mom took us all to the dentist, and Dr. Fields found a cavity just in me. Come back next week and I'll fix it, said Dr. Fields. 
Next week, I said, I'm going to Australia. On the way downstairs, the elevator door closed on my foot, and while we were waiting for my mom to go get the car, Anthony made me fall where it was muddy, and then when I started crying because of the mud, Nick said I was a crybaby, and while I was punching Nick for saying crybaby, my mom came back with the car and scolded me for being muddy and fighting. I'm having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, I told everybody. No one even answered. So then we went to the shoe store to buy some sneakers. Anthony chose white ones with blue stripes. Nick chose red ones with white stripes. I chose blue ones with red stripes, but then the shoe man said, we're all sold out. They made me buy plain old white ones, but they can't make me wear them. When we picked up my dad at his office, he said I couldn't play with his copying machine, but I forgot. He also said to watch out for the books on his desk, and I was careful as could be, except for my elbow. He also said don't fool around with his phone, but I think I called Australia. My dad said please don't pick him up anymore. It was a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. There were lima beans for dinner, and I hate limas. There was kissing on TV, and I hate kissing. My bath was too hot, I got soap in my eyes, my marble went down the drain, and I had to wear my railroad train pajamas. I hate my railroad train pajamas. <clears throat> when I went to bed, Nick took back the pillow he said I could keep, and the Mickey Mouse nightlight burned out, and I bit my tongue. The cat wants to sleep with Anthony, not me. It's been a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. My mom says some days are like that, even in Australia. Let's look at these cause and effects relationships that can be found in the text that we just read. So because Alexander drew an invisible castle, which of these things is true? He dropped his sweater in the sink. He woke up with gum in his hair. He asked to go back to the dentist next week or his teacher didn't like his drawing. Well, he drew an invisible castle. P.S. That means there was nothing on the paper. It was invisible. So obviously his teacher didn't like his drawing. That was the effect. Because Alexander fell asleep with gum in his mouth, which of these is true? Right. He woke up with gum in his hair. Because Alexander tripped on a skateboard, this one doesn't seem to make sense. Um, I actually went back to look. Let's look back at that page. Um, I got out of bed this morning. I tripped on the skateboard, and by mistake, I dropped my sweater in the sink while the water was running. So a skateboard doesn't usually have anything to do with a sweater or a sink or water running. But in this case, because he tripped on the skateboard, he dropped his sweater in the sink. These two definitely go hand in hand. Because Alexander has a cavity, what does he have to do? He has to go back to the dentist next week. In today's assignment, you're going to be practicing finding and identifying cause and effect. Remember that cause and effect are about how one thing can cause something else to happen. The cause is why something happened. The effect is what actually happened. So in the first part, we're going to read each sentence carefully and follow the directions by choosing the correct cause or effect. Some of them ask for causes. Some of them ask for effects. So let's look at the first two. What is the cause in this sentence? Amanda missed the bus and was late for school. Well, because what happened? Because Amanda missed the bus, she was late for school. So what caused her to be late for school? She missed the bus. In the next question, we have to answer differently. It asks, what is the effect of this sentence? A heavy rain flooded the town. So what actually happens in the sentence? Well, there was a heavy rain. 
and the town was flooded. Because there was a heavy rain, the effect of there being the heavy rain, the town was flooded. The effect of there being a heavy rain was that the town was flooded. Sorry, I left a sentence, a word out of that sentence. Okay, so remember, the cause is what happens first. The effect is what happens after the cause happens. So the rain happened first, and after the rain came, the town was flooded. So you have um, about 10 of those, I believe. And then we go on to section two. In this section, I give you the cause, and you have to tell me, choose from the drop down menu, what the effect was. So the car ran a red light. Did that mean the horses were thirsty? The car ran a red light, so she fell down. The car ran a red light, so she was hungry at lunch. The car ran a red light, so he was sleepy the next day. The car ran a red light, so it boiled over. The car ran a red light, so everyone laughed. It's usually not something that's funny. The car ran a red light, so it sank. The car ran a red light, so Chris got wet. The car ran a red light, so the teacher gave them a reward. That's definitely not how it happens. The car ran a red light, so another car hit it. There's your effect. Okay? So you have the same list of effects you'll see here for every cause. Let me go ahead and tell you that each cause or each effect will only be used once. So if I, if I believe another car hit it is the correct answer for this one, it won't be the answer for any others. So if you find that you want to use this again, then come back to this one and see if there was another answer that would work. Okay? And once you get to that section or once you finish that section, you can click submit and you are all done. If you have any questions about cause and effect, please email me and let me know before you submit your assignment so that I can help you.